I started studying for the UK HRI exams in 2016 with no exemptions and qualified as a fellow in 2019. From the cohort of people attempting to become an actuary, I consider myself to be very average in terms of how bright and also how conscientious I am. But I was able to progress through the exams at a good pace and in fact pass every exam that I studied for. I wanted to share my experience at a high level and talk about what worked for me so that if you're studying or thinking about starting, then hopefully you can learn from that and also have an idea of what the level of commitment is required for the different stages. Hi, my name is Rob and I'm from London. When I was younger, I wanted to be a filmmaker, but I'm too risk averse, so I ended up becoming an actuary instead. Before we get into the specifics, I wanted to talk a little bit about my qualification path. So I took all the preliminary exams before curriculum 2019, so that was CTs 1 to 9. And then my specialist exams were in the GI track, so that was what's now SP7, SP8 and SA3. The timings for when I took the exams, for CTs 1 to 8, I took two exams per session. CP1 was one session, SP7, SP8 and SA3 were one session, which I was actually able to pass all in one go uh, without actually studying for SA3 specifically, so I'll come on to talk about that later in the video. And for CP2 and CP3, they were my final exams, I took them in one session as well, but studying for those uh, is a little bit different, so the tips in here are not necessarily going to be relevant to that. In terms of study support that I received, the materials from ACTED were provided by my employer and I took an average of 20 study days a year and most of those were spent in the local library. In terms of the materials that I recommend accessing through ACTED, the combined materials, the assets, so that's ACTED solutions with exam technique, the flashcards and for the later exams I recommend the tutorials as well. The combined materials pack that obviously contains the core reading and that's your starter pack that's absolutely crucial for the asset pack uh, it gives a really good idea of what's realistically expected in your answers for the exams and a full breadth of possible responses as well as the exam technique bit that makes up the latter part of the acronym the flashcards provide a really useful type of learning feedback loop that i really appreciated and I find that useful and good summaries of all the things that you might be expected to uh, commit to memory. Uh, and I also recommend creating your own flashcards as you go along to supplement them or to replace those. For the later exams, I was really unsure of the best way to prepare for these, and so I found the tutorial really helpful for that. In particular, I think one of the key bits of value that you get from them is learning idea generation techniques. For the later exams, it's often the breadth of your ideas that is important rather than the depth. So being able to take one idea and then spin that into multiple by thinking about the positives and the negative sides and also the viewpoints of the different stakeholders is something that's really useful that was definitely a big part of the success of the tutorials for me. And the other thing is thinking about memorization of which there's also quite a lot required for the later exams and so in particular they sort of drill in the importance of the acronyms uh, and give you lots of acronyms to learn to help you memorize that material but it's worth noting that all of the acronyms are available for free on the ACTED acronym app that there'll be a link in the description for. So now I come to talk about the different stages of my exam preparation that I typically do in a season. So I'd start off with maybe the first or six weeks would be reading the core materials and in that I recommend mostly making use of the chapter summaries. So reading those summaries before each chapter then reading the chapter and then reading that summary again and on that second read through doing something a bit more proactive to commit that to memory so i recommend either transcribing it copying it out or maybe if you can bear the sound of your own voice that i definitely struggled with uh, recording yourself doing it and then you know listening to it when you're on the train or things like that i found that a useful way to uh, sneak in a bit more studying when doing other things uh, for the prelims, I'd do this initial stage at a relatively gentle pace um, until I got the results of the previous session because then once you know for sure, once you get those results, then you know for sure what exams you're going to be taking so you can commit a bit more firmly to those. The next stage is going to be going through the Q&A bank on the core, on the core reading um, and this was a good way to identify areas on my initial read through that I didn't quite understand. So the next stage that I'd do is learning from flashcards. So I've already mentioned you can buy these from ACTED, but I thoroughly recommend creating your own as you're going along with areas that you particularly struggle to understand or struggle to answer when you've gone through the Q&A bank. Once you've created those, you can work on those over time 
until you know all of them like the back of your hand. So once you're happy with your understanding of the core materials, then it's time to just absolutely start smashing through past papers. So here I recommend starting with the ACTED solutions for these hand techniques because they have they break all the answers down really nicely for you and give a full breadth of the possible answers and also give a good understanding of what is realistically expected to get a good or full number of marks on each question. But the downside of these is that they do only go back four years, so hopefully you're going to run through those pretty quickly and then you're going to need to rely on the past exams and examiner's reports from the IFO website. So these can go back uh, 10 or even 15 years, so there are loads of past papers there for you to work through. But a couple of things to look out for is uh, any curriculum changes. Obviously, uh, some questions that I may have asked previously might have been out of cu curriculum now, so you're not really going to understand them. And then also the marking schedules are often not particularly helpful, but hopefully by this stage, you should be able to work through that because you understand what's expected from the asset papers. So if I've not made it clear already, doing as many past papers is for me the absolute key determinant of success for most of the exams. The sheer quantity and repetitive nature of them could be a real struggle, especially if you're quite strict on yourself doing them under exam conditions each time. So I would not quite do that. I would go through the paper and if there are questions that I knew I was absolutely sure on, then I would just sort of quickly read through the answers. Um, and then equally, if there are questions that I had absolutely no idea on, um, then I wouldn't get too stressed about sort of struggling through it for 20 minutes. Uh, I would just sort of give, give it a quick go and then go straight to the answers and probably put together a flashcard of what I didn't quite understand or couldn't quite remember so that I can make sure that I can pick that up next time. This isn't necessarily best practice, but I think it was probably necessary for myself to sort of having a nervous breakdown doing all of those past papers. The final stage is, I guess, the sort of crunch time that I would say is going to be the final month. And in that time, I would split every single day into three sessions, a.m., p.m. and evening. On days where I wasn't at work, I would have two past papers, one in the AM session, one in the PM session, and then either do some flashcards in the evening or give myself some time off. And then when I was in work, I would either do a past paper or learn some flashcards in that evening slot. So the final quite specific tips that I've got are relate to SA3 uh, or other fellowship exams. So for SA3, only about a third of the syllabus is made up of the core reading from SA3 and the other two thirds are from SP7 and SP8. So even with those, in theory, if it was just core reading, you could get two thirds and a passing grade just from knowing the core reading from the specialist practical exams that come before it. But it doesn't really rely on the core reading, it's more on your higher order skills that you've hopefully developed with your work experience and your understanding of industry-wide issues. So if you've studied for the specialist practical exams that come before and you've had a couple of years in industry, then I recommend just going for SA3 even if you've not studied particularly for it. I say this because I think quite a lot depends on the particular questions that come up. And so when I took it, I was quite fortunate that a lot of the questions spoke quite well to the particular experience that I've had in my particular job. So I was able to score really highly on those even though they had absolutely nothing to do with the core reading on SA3, which I hadn't read. And if you are going to commit some time to studying it, I recommend really thinking more about industry-wide issues and reading around industry papers and things like that, rather than memorizing the core reading. For one of the recent sessions as well, there was a 34 mark question that was basically asking about the FCA's paper on price walking. One of my direct reports took that exam and my recommendation for him was definitely read that report and make sure you understand it because that's almost certainly gonna be an industry topic that they're gonna to want to question in that exam. And so it did come up, that's 34, mark, 34 marks that he would have done really well on and he ended up passing the exam, which uh, he was very pleased with obviously and also I was pretty happy as well that I was able to give some good advice on that. If you've made it to the end of the video, then thank you very much. I really hope that you found something useful in its contents. I wasn't really sure about making this video and what to include. So if you have any feedback or further questions, then please reach out to me uh, in the comments or otherwise and I'll do my best to help out or might even take the, any suggestions for future videos.